Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, my therapist recently told me to write a bunch of hate letters to my enemies and then burn them. I said, great, but then what do I do with the letters? Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Lanzareth Ridge from DVG. Hello everybody, we'll get back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and check out and subscribe to my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out, please subscribe, and now, back to the review. Lanzareth Ridge from DVG is a solitaire war game in which the player takes on the role of a handful of American defenders on the first day of the Battle of the Bulge as they attempt to hold back the tide of over 500 German paratroopers. The game board is a map of the area. You have various spaces for the Americans who are holding their positions, as well as the German tracks that are advancing toward them. There's also positions for German MG units, as well as American uh, auxiliary and support units as well. Now you have two important tracks on the board. You have a morale track, which starts at five, and an intelligence track, which starts at zero. Now the game board has line of sight based on the shapes and the colors of the different um, uh, spaces on the board. That tells you exactly where you can see and what you can see. There's also across the board a various lines that tell you you're going to add uh, plus one to various die rolls if you're shooting across them. Now the game, just like the real life battle, takes place over the course of four German attacks. There's going to be four German decks in which you're going to be drawing cards from in order to simulate this advance of the Germans along these lines. Now first of all you have the German attack phase. You're going to resolve three cards from the specific deck you're playing from. Now these cards may put units on the board into specific tracks. It may tell you to roll a die to determine which track they're going to go on, which they're going to start out. And it may tell you what kind of a unit it is. And among those are leaders, more on those later. But it may also tell you to put out a machine gun. The first time you draw a machine gun of a specific, uh, that goes to a specific area, you place that machine gun there. The next time you place it, you're going to actually resolve the machine gun. It's going to take shots at your guys. You may also get mortar attacks, in which case the mortars are going to target different areas on the board. Now, as you're placing these Germans, uh, they're advancing along the tracks, eventually they're going to get to your barbed wire defense. Once they get there, they actually start to stack. Now, if you would stack uh, beyond a third one, then you just start moving them through whichever track you had rolled on, they're going to advance on that track. Or if ever there are any leaders along that track, they're going to go ahead and make it through the barbed wire and advance further that round. Now also, as these assaulters are going to toward into your uh, defensive positions, you have booby traps. These are grenades. The very first assault unit that goes through is going to be killed. You're going to remove that token as well as the assault token as well. Now with machine guns and mortars, you're going to go ahead, you're going to roll a die to determine exactly where they're going to hit. Um, you're then going to kind of roll the die to disrupt units in those um, areas. You're going to roll to see if it's, it's their uh, valiant number, I believe. If it's greater than that, then they get a disrupt token. If you've got a disrupt token and they get hit again, then they are removed from the game. And any counters that are removed from the game that are killed requires you to move your morale token down one space. Now you also have some vehicles that you're going to be using during the course of the game, and they can be hit by mortar fire as well and destroyed. Otherwise, mortars are going to disrupt and kill some of your dudes uh, that are defending. Now, after you have resolved those three cards, you're going to go ahead and go to the defense phase. Now, during the defense phase, you can activate up to five units, five of your uh, figures, in order to have them take various actions to help keep the Germans out. 
Now there are major actions and there are minor actions, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into all of them because there's a ton of actions here you can take. But basically, you can move uh, figures from one space to another. You can kind of move them for for a major action, which exhausts them. Minor actions don't exhaust. <clears throat> you can move them even further. Uh, you can attack using your um, the, the, the numbers on the counter. Uh, if you get a machine gun, you can go ahead, you can actually spend machine gun uh, ammunition in order to fire the machine gun and take multiple shots at targets uh, in, in your line of sight. Now, one of the things you can do for major action is if you are in the same space with the um, radio artillery, you can go ahead and place radio uh, tokens there. Uh, if you keep placing radio tokens there, um, that will boost your chances of eventually being able to, able to call in a, an artillery strike. So for a minor action for your uh, artillery, you can place a radio token. Now for a major action, for every radio uh, artillery token you have there, you can go ahead, you can take those off the board, and you can roll a die for every one of them, a six-sided die. Now you only get one success, but all you need, you can roll all their die. If you get a five or six on any one of them, you've got a successful artillery strike. You can destroy the top three cards of the deck coming up. You can just discard them. You don't have to resolve them. Likewise, in the hopes of gaining a better score, you can try to do the same thing with intelligence. You can go to the intelligence uh, jeep, you can uh, place radio tokens down, and then the same thing, you roll a die on a five or a six, you can gain an intelligence point. You've successfully alerted your headquarters to what you're seeing. But of course, you can do other things. You can, you can dismount a, a, a weapon, you can mount a weapon, these machine guns, you can, you can move ammo back and forth uh, between weapons if they're in the same spot. You can uh, do all sorts of things like these for, for, for minor actions. And then of course the various characters, just like in the other Valiant game series, they have different attributes. They have different things that allow you to manipulate them. If a command fellow uh, ha has that icon, you can flip them over and then you can unexhaust, you know, I think up to three other characters in the same space. Um, so there's, there's, there's a lot of these different attributes that, that allow your characters to do specific things. Now, as you move into the third day, you have some specific objectives come out. Um, you have artillery, German artillery observers that you're going to try to discover who they are. In round four, you're going to have some different objectives. You're going to try to deny your equipment. You're going to try to get your equipment spiked. You're going to try to make contact. So there's different things that are going to happen, different little objectives that are going to help you uh, get a better score, potentially, if you're able to fulfill those objectives in, in rounds three and rounds four. Now, if ever one of the German assaulters gets into your into one of the American positions, and by the end of the defense phase you have not gotten him out, you have not been able to attack him and get him out, then you lose the game immediately. Now, if you're defeated in any of the first three rounds, you, you lose, various degrees of losing. But if you can make it to the fourth round and you still don't complete the game, then it's a draw. But if you can make it through all the way to the end of the game, you're going to score points. You're going to score points based on the the morale track, based on the intelligence track, based on your make contact score and your deny equipment score, and you're going to go ahead, you're going to add up all of your points to determine your final score for the game. Now if you get 1 to 9 points at the end of the game, it is a minor victory. If you get 10 to 12, it is a major victory. If you get 13 to 14 points, it is an epic victory, and you win! Lazarus Ridge! Now there is a lot more going on in this game. There's a lot, like I said, there's a lot more actions you can do and take. Your, your guys are exhausted, so you, unexhausting them, of course, is an action. Um, and, and moving men and equipment around the board, of course, and trying to counter the German advancements. So there's, there, there's a ton more you can do. There's a ton more rules I, I'm, I'm really not super getting into. I'm just giving you the, uh, kind of the overview here of the game. Now, this is, of course, uh, the latest game in the Valiant series. So if you've played Pavlov's House, Castle Itter... Soldiers and Postmen's uniforms. This one is going to be very familiar to you. The, the, the graphic design is a little bit different from those other games, um, but essentially it is, it is the same system. Of course, each game has little differences, little tweaks here and there <clears throat> that make them very much their own games, but it's a very accessible system. You played one, you can easily get into the others. Um... So first of all, let me just say, there are, like I say, I think like 20 different actions you can take, major, minor actions on your turn. And to be honest, it felt a little overwhelming. It almost felt like there was a little too much you could do, and I almost wish some of that had been, had been simplified a bit here. Um, I, I wish it was a little more streamlined as far as choices, because you always feel like, well, I can do this, I can do this, but I'm missing out on these other things that I could be doing as well. 
and it just I don't know I, I I feel like it was it was it's a little overwhelming. There's that idea of I think I read something once it's it's like seven or eight choices is kind of your optimum, um, and then beyond that you kind of second guess and other things start going on. So I I really I I, I did feel that was a little bit much as far as 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 the actions you can take the choices for the actions you can take. Um. The game itself feels a lot like the other games in that the tracks and you're defending the tracks. Um, but the story here, of course, is incredibly compelling. And just like all of these other games, um, you know, David Thompson and his designs has this real ability to invoke the history and make you feel what these soldiers are feeling. Now, I don't mean to in any way suggest that you're, you're, you were going through what they were going through, fighting a life and death struggle, but, but, that, but, but, but evoking that tension and, and really placing it out there on a tabletop for you to experience, uh, you do get, a, in a very, very teeny tiny way, a sense of the struggle. And it does it brilliantly, and all his games do it brilliantly, and it's done brilliantly here. You know, uh, for a long time, I, I, Pavlov's House has been my favorite game in this series, and Castle Itter is, is right up next to it. I enjoyed Soldiers and Postman Uniform, but not quite as much as the first two. Um, after having played Lazarus Ridge, uh, I honestly... I think this might have beat Pavlov's House for me. I don't know. I think it's just... Uh, uh, the, the, the story here is, of course, very compelling, and of course, being an American, there's something that is, is, you know, again, frankly compelling in, in that respect that there was, it's not really there in the, in the Pavlov's house game. Um, but I, I don't know, it's more than that. I think, I think the way that the, the, the tracks, it's not just kind of a central position, the tracks are heading toward, toward different positions and you've got to shift your men around and, and you've got the, the, the machine gun and your ammo. And that's one thing, you're always watching your ammo. You're not getting any more. So it's like, you're just, every time you fire that, those machine guns, you're just biting your, your nails and you're thinking every wasted shot is just it hurts because you know there's there, there's not more coming it's 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 fun and it's intense and I've yet to win this game but I'm hopeful I will at some point I made it to to to, to the fourth round um, the fourth attack but it's it, I just have a I have a ball with this game it is it's so much fun it's so, like I say, it captures the history so well, but you got some really good mechanics. I really like that, uh, the whole artillery thing too, trying to get the, the artillery going. And then when the Germans mortar your, 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 your uh, artillery truck so it only hits on the six instead of the, the, the five or the six, that's, that's brutal. Man, that's brutal, but it's fun. Anyway. No-brainer. Really, really like Lanzareth Ridge. Absolutely fantastic. First-rate solitaire war game. I love this game. Uh, recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, and our Facebook page or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check it out, please subscribe, and please give a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. That helps us out a lot as well. You know, my grandmother always used to say that the way to a man's heart was through his stomach. <laughs> She was a lousy heart surgeon. has the discriminating gamer fundamentally transformed the landscape of board game review sites as we know it, but it has fundamentally transformed my life.